I have a home and office PC lying around that I bought for light daily tasks long ago. Right now I am looking for a gaming PC that can play games at 1080p because I have only a 1080p 180Hz gaming monitor. My PC is about 5 to 6 years old and it might, probably, be the time to buy a new PC. However, this PC comes with decent specs, such as an Intel Core i5-10400, a 512GB NVMe SSD, and I have installed 32GB of DDR4 RAM. With these specs, I believe I can turn this PC into a gaming PC on a budget just by installing a powerful GPU. These days, the AMD 6000 series has become very affordable, especially the used ones. So now I plan to install an MSI Radeon RX 6600 XT to transform my old home-use PC into a playable gaming PC without spending much on new hardware. And it should be enough for my needs. Since this is a home and office PC, I need to make a few improvements to transform it into a playable gaming machine. I'll be upgrading to a 500 watt PSU to handle a high performance GPU, fixing the CPU temperatures with a larger standard cooler, and adding case fans to improve the airflow. So now, let's sit back, relax, and join me to find out whether this upgrade is worthwhile and how it performs in terms of gaming and thermals. To ensure the best audio quality and clear instructions, the narration for this video is generated using 11 Labs TTS. All perspectives and data shared reflect my own personal experience. As we all know, an office PC isn't designed for gaming, so these PCs mostly lack airflow and come with small CPU coolers and low capacity power supplies. Even if you have an office PC with a great amount of RAM, a good CPU, and a powerful GPU, it doesn't mean you can game smoothly on a machine like this. The first thing I need to do in this upgrade is to upgrade the CPU cooler. So let's remove the stock CPU cooler and prepare for a larger standard CPU cooler upgrade. The stock CPU cooler on this OEM PC should be enough for daily task use. However, when a high power GPU is installed, the CPU temperature is heavily affected by the GPU heat inside the case. So I need to upgrade the CPU cooler. The CPU cooler that I'm going to upgrade to is the Thermalright Peerless Assassin 90 SE Black. It cost only $35, and it could keep my 65 watt CPU running cooler in any use case. To install a standard CPU cooler on this OEM desktop PC, you don't need to remove the motherboard to install the CPU cooler mounting backplate. You can use the AMD screw sets with the Intel mounting brackets to mount the CPU cooler directly to the original CPU cooler screw standoffs of the PC chassis. Okay, now let's apply the thermal paste to the CPU. The thermal paste that I have here is 8.8 .8 watts per meter Kelvin. All right, let's apply one drop on the CPU. Spread the thermal paste across the whole CPU area. And now let's install the CPU heatsink. With this CPU cooler model, I need to remove the fan in order to be able to access the mounting screws. Let's tighten the two screws to mount and secure the CPU cooler heatsink to the mounting bracket. The CPU cooler heatsink is secured in place. Let's reinstall the CPU fan. The next thing to do is upgrade the power supply. The stock 250 watt PSU doesn't have an 8 pin PCIe power cable for the GPU. So now let's remove the stock power supply. To remove the PSU, push this clip and then slide the PSU forward to remove it. There are only three cables with this PSU. Here is the seven pin motherboard control PSU cable labeled as the P2 cable. And here is the four pin CPU power cable labeled as the P3 cable. The last cable that we have here is the motherboard power four pin labeled as the P1 cable. Here is my HP 500 watt replacement PSU. I bought this PSU from AliExpress for $50. For the 500 watt HP replacement PSU, we also have the P1 and P2 cables, 
but for the CPU power cable, we have a 2x4 pin 12 volt PSU power cable, just like a normal 8 pin EPS CPU power cable. The special cable offered by this 500 watt PSU is that we have 2x8 pin 6 plus 2 for the GPU. All right, so now let's install the 500 watt replacement PSU into the PC case and secure the PSU by reinstalling the three screws. Let's connect all the PSU cables to the motherboard. Let's take a look at this area. I think we can install a 120 millimeter fan right here to feed cooler air to the CPU and a 92 millimeter fan at the bottom area to feed cool air to the GPU. This bottom area cannot accommodate a 120 millimeter fan because it would take up the GPU installation space. So I went with a 92 millimeter fan instead. To be able to mount the fan to the case, I need to design some fan brackets for this PC. The 120 millimeter fan bracket for mounting at the top of the front chassis. And this one is a 92 millimeter fan bracket that I designed following the shape of the SSD cage so that I can mount it to the PC case the same way as the SSD cage. And these are the three D-printed fan brackets. We need to embed the female threads. The M 3x5x5 female threaded insert nuts. Now let's embed one female thread insert nut for the 92 millimeter fan bracket and embed four female insert nuts for the 120 millimeter fan bracket. We can now install the fans onto the three D printed brackets. Secure each fan to the bracket with four screws. All right, let's install the 92 millimeter fan at the bottom of the front case. Align the fan bracket with the retention holes and slide to lock the bracket in place. Secure the fan bracket with a screw. Let's install the 120 millimeter fan at the front top area of the case and secure the fan bracket to the case with four screws. The 92 millimeter fan that I am using at the front has a PWM splitter cable, so I can use that cable to connect two fans to the same fan header on the motherboard. I am connecting the 92 millimeter front fan to the CPU fan header on the motherboard, sharing it with the CPU fan. For the 120 millimeter fan at the top of the front panel, I will connect it to the chassis fan header. I need a PWM fan splitter to connect both the rear fan and the front fan to the same chassis fan header on the motherboard. The PC upgrade process is nearly complete. We only need to install a GPU and we will be ready to game. For this build, I'm using a used MSI Radeon RX 6600 XT that I found for $170. Given the excellent AMD driver support on Linux, I'm planning to test it out with SteamOS. Stay tuned for the next video, where I'll compare its gaming performance against Windows 11. All right, let's get this MSI 6600 XT seated into the PCIe slot and secured. Let's just hook up the PCIe 8-pin power cable and we're good to go. Okay, now let's turn on the PC and run the CPU and GPU stress tests to check the PC's thermal performance. Let's check the GPU installation on this PC to make sure everything is correct. I'm using GPU-Z to check the GPU installed on this PC. Here we have an MSI Radeon RX 6600XT with 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM and 2048 SP cores running at PCIe X8 Gen 3. 
Let's perform the CPU stress test. I'm running the CPU stress test using CPU Z and monitoring the CPU temp using the HW Info app. The max CPU temp recorded is 66 degrees Celsius. The new dual chamber CPU cooler and the case fans at the front actually work. Let's check how loud the CPU fan noise is. You can compare the CPU fan noise with my mouse clicks. Let's move on to running the GPU stress test to find out whether this PC upgrade can keep the GPU cool enough for gaming. I'm using Furmark to stress out the GPU. Keep in mind that Furmark may force the GPU to run very high, and it is not recommended to do so. But I know what I'm doing and am taking my own risk to see how high the temperature of the GPU gets with this setup. Now let's compare the GPU fan noise with my mouse clicks. As a result of the Furmark test, the max GPU temp is 66 degrees Celsius, while the GPU hotspot temp is 84 degrees Celsius. That is a great temperature and very healthy for this Office PC upgrade. Let's jump into some gameplay and see what this machine can actually do. The first game that I want to test here is God of War Ragnarok at 1080p, high settings with no FSR and no frame generation. With the afterburner graph on the screen, the gameplay achieves around 70 to 75 FPS. The CPU temp is good at around 60 degrees Celsius, while the GPU temp is around 65 degrees Celsius. The next game I want to test here is Red Dead Redemption 2. I am using the built-in game benchmark with 1080p default graphics settings with a high medium mix. As a result of the benchmark test, the gameplay got an average of 94 FPS. Now, let's move on to Cyberpunk 2077 with 1080p high preset settings. With this preset, the game uses FSR quality, but frame generation is turned off. As a result of the Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay benchmark, the gameplay got an average of 97 FPS. The last game that I want to test is Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p highest settings with no FSR. At the end of the game, the benchmark shows a result of 101 FPS. For my final thoughts, I am really satisfied with this Office PC to Gaming PC upgrade. It really provides solid 1080p gaming performance with most AAA games without spending too much on a whole new PC. With the new CPU cooler upgrade and the 3D designed fan brackets, I was able to install two case fans at the front, and the result is that it can actually fix the lack of airflow in this restricted OEM desktop PC. I hope you enjoy this video. If you found it helpful, please like and share and consider subscribing to get more PC upgrade and modification videos like this one. Thank you for watching and see you next time.